Let's be cozy. Thank you. Thank you, Deb. Uh, as you were thinking, singing, I got I got an image of a of like a cosmic lost and found. I'll bet that's probably a pretty busy place these days. There is indeed a lot going on. Uh, and so we come together in places like this for conversations like this uh, in order that we can find each other uh, and perhaps find ourselves that we may continue uh, on this uh, adventure that is life. So good morning, everyone, and welcome to our virtual Sunday morning service. I am Jeff Anderson, your senior minister, um, and it is my pleasure to speak to our theme this morning uh, for the month of August which is unity, oneness, inclusivity. We have a lovely talk title this morning, which is, We Are Better Together. Ain't it the truth? And isn't it an interesting thought to consider? Um, before we launch into the material, I do have uh, a little bit of business that, um, I would like to attend to, actually, that I'm honored to attend to. Um, you know, here at the Oakland Center, we, <clears throat> we have licensed um, prayer practitioners, uh, people who are trained and take years of training, um, specifically in the transformational power of, of prayer. And some folks commit to this practice long term. Um, this morning, we get to celebrate three such individuals, all of whom uh, are celebrating 20 years of official service, high service, to the Center for Spiritual Living, Oakland. Um, let's see, what was I going to tell you about that? Oh, the um, title emeritus or emerita um, is applied to those that have reached a status, have reached a, a point in their professional journey um, where they are... Um, now considered practitioners for life. Um, they don't have to do the paperwork anymore. They don't have to renew their license. They are practitioners for life. Um, and the three of them certainly are. I would ask that you please join me in extending our collective gratitude and congratulations to Richard Robinson, to Carmen West Jefferson, and to our Reverend Jerry Carter. So to the three of you, thank you, congratulations, and blessed be. I'm honored to be on the path with you, blessed be. All right. Thank you, Reverend Jeff. Yes, ma'am, I'm, I'm, I'm tickled to pieces. Is that you, Carmen? Yes, that's me, yes. <laughs> congratulations, I'm glad you're here. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Yeah, Richard, yeah. you're so grateful as well. In fact, well, since I have the three of you here, I probably know better to ask, but do I, a, a, any of you have a brief anything that you would like to share with, uh, with the village this morning? I just want to say that it's been a pleasure to serve uh, the Centers for Spiritual Living for 20 years, um, both at uh, First Church of Religious Science, East Bay Church of Religious Science, and Oakland Center Mm -hmm. uh, Center, uh, Oakland Center for Spiritual Living. So I just want to uh, express my gratitude and my growth and the ability to serve the congregation for over 20 years. Thank you. Blessed be. Thanks for all your service. Richard, Jerry, ah, uh, there they are. <laughs> there we are. Richard? What do you have to say for yourselves? It's good to be in service. Uh, we never know what's going to show up in front of us in upper room or when we get a call, a phone call. And somehow over the 20 years plus that I've been a practitioner, they always came to me at the right time to bring a lesson to me. Not only their situation, but a lesson of growth. And so I'm very appreciative, as Carmen mentioned, for what comes to us from the other side, from the other person's viewpoint. That's a learning, stretching, 
uh, element in practitioner work that uh, I really uh, admire and am very appreciative of. Mm. So I would just like to thank everyone. As a, a minister for the Oakland Center for Spiritual Living, it's always about practitionership. And so I'm really honored to be honored. I didn't think this would happen because of becoming a minister, but it makes perfect sense because we're always practitioners. I love service, as you know, and I grow through every experience of service, every person I pray with, everything that I do grows me through our spiritual center. So thank you, Reverend Jeff, for this opportunity. And thanks to everyone for being a part of my life. Blessings. Bless indeed. Thanks, you guys. Good to see you. <laughs> oh, it's so good to see you. It's so good to see people, real people. Well, I don't know if you're real or not, but I think you are. All right. So changing gears. Now we get to uh, wander into the material a little bit. I want to start by sharing with you <clears throat> about a sleepless night that I had this last week. Um, it was Wednesday night uh, and it was so smoky outside. In fact, I'm still, my eyes burn. Um, it's still quite smoky here this morning. Um, and Wednesday night sleep just wouldn't come. Which, um, as you know, if you've ever experienced the joy of sleeplessness, leaves a person with a lot of time to think. Um, and so I did about life and and how absolutely weird it is sometimes. And, and I thought about fires and, and plagues and people and politics. I thought about something that um, Reverend Francione said this last week in a conversation I had with her that's also been following me around, <clears throat> probably because it relates so well to our topic of inclusivity. Um, I don't remember what she and I were talking about, uh, but Reverend Fran said something like, and that's God too. And that's God too. One life, God's life, expressing itself in infinite ways, right? <clears throat> My ability to recognize the divinity of everything does not determine or influence in any way the divinity or value of everything and everyone. Let me say that again. My ability to recognize the divinity, the inherent divinity of, of everything and everyone does not affect the inherent divinity of everything and everyone. Whether I recognize it or not, it's the truth. It's a capital T. Divinity exists independent of my opinion of it, my judgment of it. One way or the other, there is only one life, and that life is God's life, and that life is my life, and your life right now. So I was thinking about the fires and the firefighters and, and, and other first responders and frontline people serving so selflessly. That's God too. And those affected by the fires, God too. The fires themselves, God too. Yeah. So, so many of them lightning caused, the ones here in California at least, um, which has been happening since the beginning of time. <clears throat> we know they have their place even while our hearts ache. And we give great thanks this morning to all who are in service on the front lines, all of the first responders, second responders, and third responders. You have our gratitude again this year. <clears throat> in our reading this morning, Dr. Holmes said, it seems to me that it's only as we view all life, everything, from what we call great to what we call small, important to unimportant, it's only as we view the whole thing as one stupendous whole that we shall really enter into communion, into oneness and rapport 
with the reality of all that is. It's big to consider. And there will be challenges um, <laughs> this time in the world history. We know that there will be things that will challenge us. Um, perhaps the biggest challenge is, can I know the inherent good? The divinity, the nature of things, the nature of creation, the big picture, if you will, despite any and all appearances to the contrary. The paradox of spiritual living. And we get to try it when, when there are fires keeping us up at night or, or, or when thinking about money or, or try it when, when you or a, a loved one has to wait for a test result or a diagnosis. I'm not saying it's easy, it's, it's a question of faith. No, it's more than faith. In fact, it's, it's an absolute, it's a knowing that God is all there is because it, there could be nothing else, right? If we need to start here, we will. If we need to come back here, we will. In the beginning, God. Finding the God then becomes the means, the method for finding the good. I'm also trying to stay informed, and, and so I, I cut bits and pieces of the convention this last week. Something that I realized at approximately 3.30 in the morning on Thursday was what an incredible opportunity we have before us this week and next to learn about each other, to practice looking for the good, looking for the God. We, we talk a lot in communities like ours about love and the power of it, the omnipotence. In fact, love is the greatest power. The power to move mountains, change lives with the faith of a mustard seed. We speak of, of love being the nature of God, and, and if that's so, then we are the microcosm of that macro. And if that's so, then it leads us right to our other reading this morning. The beginning of love is the will to let those we love be perfect, perfectly themselves. The resolution not to twist them to fit our own image. If in loving them, we do not love what they are, but only their potential likeness to ourselves then we do not love them. We lo only love the reflection of ourselves we find in them. Can I look for and find the inherent divinity of someone else, whether I agree with them or not, whether I understand them or not, whether I like them or not, whether they're sitting on my side of the aisle or not. I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm saying that God is all there is, without exception. Our, our theme this month speaks to that oneness, unity, inclusivity. Such a powerful time for us to practice. Um, and you can do it in the privacy of your own home, in the privacy of your own mind. I'm not usually big on uh, um, a big... Do not uh, turn on the TV kind of guy. Um, but in this case, we might learn a thing or two. Can I love above all else? If not, then I, I have to do my own work to be the change I wish to see. There it is. I cannot possibly reasonably expect something from them that I am not willing or able to reciprocate. That's what Gandhi was talking about. That's the law of attraction. That's reciprocity. Much of the challenge that we're 
we're currently in the middle of, of facing right now um, has something to do with separation uh, an experience of separation from self from each other there's a lot of disconnect from each other from our planet also a lot of disconnect right now um, from god i would say the normal amount of disconnect um, and and if i'm seeking to have a different experience one of of feeling and recognizing more and more each day the inherent commonality the fundamental building blocks that are the same them and me unity basic wants and needs hearts and desires pretty similar among us we want to feel safe and secure uh, to a greater or lesser degree we want to feel successful whatever that means to the individual we all want those things we've just been taught different perspectives different worldviews different methodologies different ways of getting and of having the point is not always to be in agreement the point is to recognize that the nature of diversity the nature of creation is that there will always be a spectrum of opinions and positions and worldviews as long as there's more than one person on this planet there will be more than one opinion heck we don't even need another person for that we can get plenty conflicted all by ourselves we want to make it through our days at all i'm conflicted i'm confused i am afraid the things we tell ourselves i am a lot of energy flying around pick a topic politics race environment economy wellness i don't know about you but in order to keep myself centered and nourished my spiritual practice feels like it needs to be at an all-time high i need to be more diligent now more aware of my thinking my self-talk because if i'm not careful if i am not diligent I will find myself borrowing your self-talk, someone else's self-talk, repeating something that I've heard that perhaps is not my truth. Perhaps I haven't really checked in with my own self. There is a constant diligence now. Not that I'm always successful at filtering out all of those unconstructive thoughts, but I catch myself a lot to find out if it's true, find out if it's mine. Uh, things like, I don't like him. I don't like them. They are, they are whatever the adjective you want to choose, fill in the blank. I'm judging them because usually we judge because we're afraid and usually what we're afraid of uh, it has something to do with lack or loss i'll lose what i have or there will not, will not be enough for me so i'm going into this this convention business as an observer to listen to understand more better as a spiritual practice so that I can be more inclusive and kind and loving and understanding in my own thinking. We can learn a lot about people by paying attention, close attention. And you can learn more if you can set your judgment down for just a bit. Feel free to pick them up later. You just might learn a thing or two it occurred to me that in the wee hours of the morning next week is another convention and another wonderful opportunity to listen and to learn and to practice. <clears throat> I was reading a blog this last week called Good Vibes Blog. What's not to like, right? Uh, the author, his name is Jeanette Ma, M-A-W. She's young. She's optimistic. And in this blog, 
post she was talking about the power of I am. This is a very good time to check in with yourself. She says it, I say it, lots of us are saying it, check, check, check. Uh, a little self-diagnostic on your self-talk. Uh, I can tell you that I learned this last week. My self-talk is not as uh, patient, kind, or loving at four o'clock in the morning as it is at other times during the day. And I get cranky with you and with me and, and with God. Here's what she calls her quick and dirty I am tutorial for savvy creators. And I think I'm a savvy creator. She says, the I am statement is the mother load of all affirmation. There's likely no better way to co-create your reality. Anytime you speak the word I am. So anytime you say, I am sick of reading political posts on Facebook, or I am happy to be here, or I am beat or busy, tired, confused, delighted. You're engaging a way to speak that reality into being, wanted or not. You for yourself. What has been your, your go-to I am statement the last few days or the last week? I am what? You hear yourself say it all the time. I am hopeful. I am peaceful and at ease. I am depleted. I am exhausted. I am filled with loving kindness. I am I am well. I'm peaceful and at ease. I'm happy. Our blog writer continues, hmm, oh, whoops, I zipped right past her. Come back, our blog writer continues, hmm, why are I am statements so powerful? Some quote the Hebrew Bible when Moses asked God his name to tell the others to teach, to which God replied, I am that, I am. We invoke the name of God, you see, when we use the I am. It's also powerful, she says, because it's a direct way to tell the story of yourself. When you say, I am this, or I am that, you give a very specific and direct instruction on how it is for you. And the universe says, yep, I'm having the time of my life, or I'm at the end of my rope. Such direct instruction the universe responds to. Obviously, lots of us use I am statements in, in ways that don't serve our happiness or our well-being, but we can change it. A little diligence will serve us very well. I am a powerful change agent for good. I am you know, my go-to, one of my go-tos, I am a place where the good of God shows up in the world. I am, we are, absolutely. I'm a bridge of peace and connection where there is separation. I am that. I am. And that's God too. That person is a child of God. That person is my brother or my sister, that person is somehow serving the unfoldment of higher and greater good. I use the I am meditation practice a lot for times, for example, when I, when I can't sleep. Um, a yoga teacher many years ago taught me about diaphragmatic breathing. And she explained to me that there are three sections of the lung um, and she said you can inhale into your belly and then into your ribs and then if you, into your chest three sections exhale first from your chest then your ribs then your belly and then you pause so belly ribs chest see my body knows what i'm gonna do 
exhale from the chest, the ribs, and the body, and the belly. <clears throat> now to that breathing practice, I add a little three syllable, a little three word affirmation, um, and it has to do with the, with the I am. When I'm breathing in, I will say to myself in my mind and heart, God is light. And I will exhale and say, I am light. God is life. And I fill myself up with that. I am life. God is peace. And so I have a, a handful of, of qualities of God that I love, seven of them. God is light, God is life, God is joy, God is peace, God is power, God is beautiful, God is love. There you have it. All you need to know about God. See, Dr. Holmes, back to his quote, he says, it's, it's only as we view all of life, the whole thing as one stupendous whole, that we really enter into communion with the reality of all that is. There's only one life. And the life is God's life. And that life is my life. And your life. And we're better together. Blessed be, let us pray. I invite you to take that breath that lets my body know that I'm entering into sacred time and space. God is light. I am light. And as I remember the qualities of God, I remember that I am that too, for I can be nothing else. In the beginning, God, and from that one source, all things come. Within that, all things exist, including me. Each person within the sound of my voice, I am that. We are that. And so it is from that place that I speak this word this morning, a, a, a word of gratitude and a word of blessing. Grateful to be in such good company, to have the technology to come together. However it is that we come together, knowing that in the coming together, in the connecting, that there is giving and receiving, that there is nourishing, that there is recognition, that there is light, there is love, there is good of a thousand different kinds in this coming together of ours. And even as I recognize the, the inherent limitations of technology, I open my mind and heart in a greater way to experience life and to experience the village in a greater way. I open my mind and heart to experience all humanity and all life in a greater way. I claim that for myself and anyone who chooses it as their own. I'm so grateful to be in such good company, grateful to know that as we move forth from this place this morning, we do so grounded and centered. We do so, do so awake and aware. We do so open and loving, bringing that omnipotent presence and power of love with us. Powerful change agents in the world. I am that. You are that. We are one. So grateful to remember this truth, then I rest in that gratitude as I release the word. And let it be. And together we say. And so it is.